Hey everybody. Oh, do I still have my earring? Oh, I took out my earrings earlier. Never mind. Okay. Hey. <laughs> um, I just got home from deliverance service and I just wanted to share some things with you guys. <sighs> Tonight was one of the most amazing nights. It was beautiful. It was beyond beautiful. I have to tell you. Come here. I have to tell you. When Jesus told us to do deliverance ministry, okay, um, he told that to everybody, by the way. This isn't just for special people, okay? All of us are called to do deliverance ministry. Hey, Deanne. All of us are called to do deliverance ministry. He said, cast demons out, lay hands on the sick, or heal the sick, cast demons out, raise the dead, baptize. These were all in the great commandment, okay? So these are for every single one of us. Let me tell you, let's see if I can talk about this. So, I've done teachings on deliverance. I've done Bible studies on deliverance. Um, up until this last year, though, I thought I knew what deliverance ministry was. Up until this year. And I'd come across things in the altar, you know, like at altar calls and stuff like that. I had come across um, different people manifesting and different things. But I'd never really done hands-on deliverance ministry where you are full on in the battle, okay? I was even thinking, and I'm gonna do a video about this at some point, but I was even thinking, there was a teaching I did on deliverance ministry back um, a few years ago. I was interviewing a couple um, that actually had Anton LaVey's daughter in their home. Um, Anton LaVey is the head of the Church of Satan. Um, and it was, they had his daughter in their home. She was trying to come out of that lifestyle. Very amazing story there. Um, I was actually interviewing them and I asked them, I was like, how come demons don't just come out when you tell them to? Like, they should just go. They should just go with the name of Jesus. Like, why does it have to be this battle? Like, why does it take so long? And at the time, guys, I'll just be real honest with you. I had not done a lot of hands on deliverance ministry like I do now. I had done it in the traditional sense of the word and what I feel like most, probably most charismatic or most, you know, prophetic churches type operate in. I had done that type of deliverance ministry and it was frustrating to me when I would tell a demon to go and it wouldn't. Um, and so I asked him and he looked at me. I need to go back and find the video. He looked at me and was kind of like, oh, you sweet little dumb child. <laughs> And he was like, well, sometimes they have a legal right to be there. And sometimes, you know, there's other things that need to happen. They need to renounce some things, whatever, for, you know, the demons to flee. Let me tell you, the person, the LaToya, that asked that question was someone that was militant, that was just ready to kick some demons in the face. And here's why I love deliverance ministry. And here's why I think Jesus was genius to tell us to do it. Because that type of deliverance that's not deliverance ministry. That's a militant attitude. That's somebody that is not doing it because they love people. It, they're not doing it through the unction of the Holy Spirit. And you're just doing it out of power in the name of Jesus. Or, I mean, power in the name of Jesus, which there is. But you're just doing it out of a militant attitude. Like, just wanting to kick the demons around. Does that make sense? Here's what I've come to see. Deliverance ministry is the most beautiful thing in the world, okay? I'm going to tell you a story about tonight. But... I want to tell you this first. Say hi to me if you're there so I know that you're here watching. Um, but Jesus was genius when he told us to do deliverance. Because let me tell you something. When you get into actual deliverance ministry and you are doing hands-on deliverance with people, you are working with them for an hour, two hours, three hours sometimes, longer sometimes. Um, when you're doing actual hands-on deliverance ministry, hey girl, hey Andrea, um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, when you're doing actual hands-on deliverance ministry, here's a couple of things you're going to learn. Number one, you better stay humble. You better understand that it has nothing to do with you. Zero. Zero to do with you. It is all in the name, power, and authority of Jesus Christ and his blood. That is it period. So as you're doing deliverance ministry, it is going to keep you humble. So God, I believe part of the reason why Jesus called us, all of us to do this ministry, to, to be equipped to do this is because it will keep you humble. It will keep you at the feet of Jesus. It will keep you in the secret place. 
it will keep you there because you have to fully rely on the Holy Spirit. There is no formula to it. There is no do this, do this, do this every single time. There is no every single time somebody manifests like this, here's how you cast that out. There is no, there are no rules, okay? There are no rules to it because, I mean, there are certain guidelines, bumpers, if you will, but there's no systematic way to do it every single time you say this and then this happens. That's not how it works. It's not a formula because... God designed it that way because that makes you stay 100% fully reliant on the Holy Spirit. You have to be in tune. You have to have your spiritual ear tuned to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says so that you can do deliverance on that person, okay? He's going to tell you different things. He's going to have you ask them questions. He's going to give you insight. He's going to show you things. He's going to um, call out diseases in their body and infirmities or, you know, things that they've been struggling with or a question to ask them, like, you know, like, you know, Hey, sorry, sorry to ask you this. I know this is sensitive, you know, but do you struggle with this or do you struggle with that? Or has this ever happened to you? And Holy Spirit's going to show you where the hangups are and maybe you have to stop and get them to forgive somebody and then renounce. And then you go back into deliverance. Like there's all of these things that happen, but it's 100% reliant upon Holy Spirit. You have to stay in the secret place, guys. And then the third thing about deliverance ministry that I absolutely love, it is so beautiful and I'm so excited. Um, it just, it makes you love people. It makes you truly love people, really love people. Guys, I thought like, I knew I cared about people before deliverance ministry, but like, and I've been in ministry for, I mean, gosh, I don't know, probably actual been in ministry for 17 years. Okay, so like I've come into different things. I've prayed for people. I've interceded for people. I felt like, you know, oh, I love people and I serve people and, and, and I, I minister to them. But guys, the level of love that comes on you doing deliverance ministry, number one, I believe you get the heart of the Father. I believe you get the eyes and the ears and the heart of Jesus. When you are doing deliverance ministry, you begin to see people as how he sees them. And it breaks your heart because you know that he's wanting his child to be free. He's wanting his son or daughter to be free. And so you see that person. You're not looking at at, at, you know, other, I see your exclamation points, girl. Um, you're not looking at, at what they're struggling with. You're not even looking at the demon that you're talking to. You're thinking about that person. That's what you're doing. You're thinking about the person, the child of God that needs to be saved. So I just have to tell you all that tonight. I'm really just like giddy about it. I can't even handle it. So I got a message, um, I guess it was the first of last week, maybe. I got a message from a girl that used to be in my youth group, and she may end up watching this tonight. I hope she does. Um, but she was in my youth group back when I was a youth pastor in the beginning of my youth pastor years. I was a youth pastor for 10 years. She was in my youth group back then. She had a ton of struggles. She was a hot mess. She was a difficult case back in the day, okay? And um, I don't think she ever smiled, really, unless I, like, was like forcing her, like, come on, smile at me. You know, I'm taking a picture or what, you know, something like that. Um, she was very beat down by life. She had a lot of struggles. She had a lot of, she just had a lot of issues back in the day. Um, so of course through time and whatever, her and her family just kind of, you know, I lost touch with her and her brother, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, she messages me from out of the blue the other day and she said, I want to go to church. And I said, well, um, you know, I go here, on Sunday mornings. I go here on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Um, and, uh, she says she needed a ride. And I said, well, where you live is like 30 minutes away from me in the opposite direction. Um, so I'm like, where you live? I was like, I, I could pick you up for a Wednesday night or a Sunday night. Like that's really all I can do right now. So, um, Wednesday night didn't work out for her to go. So she said she would come tonight. And, uh, so I went and picked her up. I, I said, well, let me tell you, I was like, Sunday night is deliverance only. Like, we only do deliverance. There's not really preaching. There's teaching on deliverance and there's worship, but then we do deliverance. She said, I'm ready. I'm ready to get delivered. I'm ready. I said, okay, great. So, as I have her in the car and we're on our way to the service, um, she said, I said, so, when's the last time you were in church? Let's talk. And uh, she was like 10 years ago. And I said, oh, my gosh. So like on the inside of me, I'm thinking 10 years, like it's been 10 years since you've been to church. Are you ready to walk into what you're about to walk into? Cause she's about to walk into a full blown deliverance service. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Um, so anyway, I started talking to her. I said, okay. So I was like, how's your walk with the Lord? Like, let's talk. You know, we talked about her life. We talked about, I mean, we had a long ride to get there. So we talked about several different things. And then I was like, well, let's just pray. I said, 
do you feel like you're you giving your life back to Christ? Like, are you are you good? Are you back? You know, and she was like, 100%. Like, I'm so ready. I'm so ready to change my life. She's like 30 years old now. She's like, I'm so ready to change my life. Like, you know, um, I 100% am ready to to do this thing. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, let's just pray before we get there. So we prayed and we just, you know, prayed, you know, Jesus just to, you know, live in her heart and, you know, she would serve him now. She renounced Satan. You know, she's like, I'm not serving you anymore. You know, I'm serving the Lord. She'd been involved in the occult. She'd been involved in several different things. Okay. Um, drugs, addict, like heavy addiction. She'd been clean for almost a year. Like, I mean, so many things that happened in and out of jail. So she's praying. So we're praying and just renouncing some things and, you know, asking the Lord just to come and be Lord of her life and all of that, just to make sure. So then after that, I'm like, okay, so here's what we're going to. So then I kind of busted an honor of we're about to go to a deliverance service. And she's like, yeah, okay. And I said, do you understand what that is? And, and she was like, I'm not really. And I was like, well, we're going to be casting demons out of people. <laughs> so she was like, oh, Okay, she goes, I'm not going to lie, that makes me a little nervous, but I'm up for it. She's like, I really, I'm really ready to change my life. And I was like, I believe that you are. Guys, oh my gosh. I love Jesus. Tonight was so beautiful. It was so absolutely beautiful. So she gets there tonight. I'm sorry, I'm just still so happy. So she gets there tonight. And um, she's really nervous walking in. She's like, oh, I'm nervous. So we go and sit down, and she's like, oh. She's like, I just feel, you know. I was like, that's okay. She goes, I can feel God in here. And I was like, I know. I was like, it's, I'll say you haven't felt that in a while, have you? And she's like, no. And uh, she's like, I'm really kind of nervous. And I'm like, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. I was like, I'm here. And I already told her. I was like, I don't know if I'll get to pray with you or not. Because when we start, like, we're up looking around for people that are, you know, manifesting and showing signs. And then we're, we're praying with them. I was like, so I don't know if I'll get to pray with you or if somebody else will get to pray with you. I told some ladies that were there that I had brought her. And, you know, I was like, I really think she wants to, like, I think this is a big night for her. And, you know, I pointed, you know, I said, she's sitting with me. So I was like, if I'm up praying for somebody, like, y'all go, you know, check on her, you know, whatever. And um, so anyway... So we start to worship, and um, God is just so good, y'all. So we get up to worship, and um, we're worshiping, and she's just, I mean, she's already crying. She's already, I'm like, she has not felt the Spirit of God on her in quite a while, years. And um, just the love of the Father, just wooing her, just the love of God wooing her. And uh, so I hugged her during worship. She's crying. I'm like, just, you know, just pray. Just, you know, be, be saying the words of the song. And, you know, um, I can't think of what song it is now, but it was something like, you know, no evil's going to get me and, you know, um, I can't remember. Anyway, it was such a good song. And then they were talking about Jesus being the deliverer and how, anyway, it was a good song. Worship's awesome. Anyway, so we're praying. So we go back to our seats, does some teaching, and then we stand up and get ready to start renouncing some things. So I go stand up front like we do. And I'm looking around. And um, when the security guards called me over and, um, and, oh, is it really? Oh my gosh, I need to find out, Andrea, if that is... A GBBC song. Oh my gosh, I need to find out because it was it was such a good song. Anyway, um, so one of the security guards pulls, calls me over and he's like, "I think this one back here, like you know, needs your help." So I go back to this woman and um, so I'm praying with her and um, she so is wanting to be set free, but she's like she's struggling. She is fighting, fighting, and. Um, as I'm praying for her, you know, I was like, um, yes, yes, that is it. That is it, Andrea. Yes, absolutely. That's it. Is that, is that a, is that a GBBC song? Cause it's so good. It's such a good song. Oh my gosh. It's so good. It's so prophetic. So, so anyway, so I'm praying with this one woman and, um, her and her friend, and I mean, they're both manifesting pretty heavily and oh my gosh, Monica wrote that. That's an awesome song. I've got kudos to Monica. Um, so I'm praying with this woman and you know, they're manifesting pretty heavy and she's like coughing and she's like, you know, stuff's coming up. Um, and guys, let me tell you the power in the name of God the power in the name of God. There is no demon in hell that can stand against the name of Jesus, okay? I'm literally looking at someone, and she tells me um, they're not her, obviously. Um, actually, the demon in her um, spoke out and said, um, I'm a pagan witch. 
or says she's a pagan witch. It was just the demon talking about her. She says she's a pagan witch. Um, and pretty much was like, you know, I own her, whatever. Um, and so I, I called the girl back forward and I'm talking to her and I'm like, I said, are you a witch? I said, are you, are you, do you profess to be a witch? And she said, I was, she said, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ on September the 18th. And, um, I was like, okay. So we talked, you know, about some things, about her getting rid of some things that were still in her home, different things like that. And just going through deliverance with her and just watching God, like love on her. You could tell there was still such a struggle and such a pull with the occult and um and and some different things we're having to work through there. But she got some freedom tonight. And then I'm looking around the room and then another friend of mine that I had invited that had been struggling with some infirmities in her body, um, seen a bunch of doctors, no relief, no help. I said, Why don't you come to deliverance? Let's just see. You know, if the doctors can't help you, if medicine's not helping you, it could be a spiritual thing that you need to attack. So she came, she, I looked up, she's in the back, she's getting help and prayed for, she's getting deliverance. I see her, you know, getting deliverance, getting rid of some things. And it was just beautiful. So I look back and the girl that I brought is praying and crying. Oh my gosh, Beverly, wait till I tell you who it was. You're going to be like, what? I was so excited. You'll know who it was. Um, but, uh, she was praying. She was crying. She was screaming. Like the girl that I brought was getting huge help. Like she was, you know, really getting delivered. So I don't know how long went by an hour or so, hour, hour and a half, however long it was. So I'll get back up to her and, um, I looked at one of the girls that was praying with her, and I, I came up behind her, and I was like, is she good? Like, things good? And she was like, yeah. She said, why don't you come hug her? And I come around to her face. I come around to her face, and she is literally just beaming. I've never, I've known this girl since she was probably 14 years old. I've never seen her smile like this. Like, she was like... I said, how are you? And she said, I've never felt like this in my entire life. And she just hugs me and just, I mean, starts weeping, just openly weeping. And it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was so beautiful, guys. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you right now. Deliverance is the children's bread, y'all. It is the children's bread. It is. I'm telling you, this girl was free. Free. She felt free for the first time in her life. And I'm looking around the room, and then my other girl that, that had been reaching out to me about healing and stuff, she's, get, she's gotten freedom, and she's... You know, she's got freedom. And I look back at the one that said she was a witch. And she's sitting there and she's like, oh. And she just, I'm looking around the room and their faces just glowing everywhere. People just radiant with the love of God on their face. And I'm like, who would not want to do this? There is nothing like deliverance ministry, guys. There's nothing like it. There is nothing like seeing a soul set free, seeing a heart set free. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. You cannot buy it. You cannot earn it. You cannot work your way or weasel your way into it. You cannot. I'm telling you, deliverance is for the children. It is the children's bread. That's what Jesus said. Guys, if you are a Christian and you're still struggling, go. I, I beg you, please seek deliverance. Seek it out. You can think I'm crazy. You know what? I don't care. And you know why I don't care? Because I've seen it. I, it you've, you've come too late. You come too late to tell me, which I've always known. Like, I didn't need convincing. I didn't need convincing. I've always known. I've always known I was meant to do this. Like, I didn't need convincing. Like I said, I've done two teachings on it. I've operated in it in different levels and different ways. But to be able to have the opportunity to practice it, to do it. When I say practice, I don't mean practice like practicing 
like a doctor practices medicine. That's what I'm talking about. Like to be able to do it on a regular basis through TSNL and then going over to Global Vision. And, you know, I mean, I'm starting to do them on Zoom now, do deliverance through Zoom. Um, you know, I'm going to be teaching on it soon, guys. Watch out because I'm about to bring it. This next deliverance teaching I do is going to be off the chart. Anyway, um, but like when you start to see all of this and you realize, okay, think about this, guys. And I've heard it said a couple of times. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it to you just in case you haven't heard it yet. You can preach and you can sing through gifting. It does not take anointing and relying on the Holy Spirit to do either one of those things. It just doesn't. It's great if you do. But it's not, you don't have to. Like, you could fake it till you make it, you know what I'm saying? You could fake it. You could get up, anybody can get up and preach a good message. Anybody can get up and sing a song and everybody get goosebumps and cry and whatever. But you cannot fake it till you make it in deliverance. You cannot do deliverance ministry and be prideful. You cannot do deliverance ministry and not be 100% relying upon Holy Spirit. You will get your butt kicked. You can't do it. You can't do deliverance ministry and not love people. You can't do deliverance ministry and want to be out of there in 15 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. When you're sitting there praying with somebody and they are literally, literally, when, they, when you see that person and not the demon, when you're looking at that person in the eyes and they're saying, please help me. I'm desperate to get free. I want more of Jesus. I want to be free from this. I want to lay this down. I want this broken off my family. When you're looking in their eyes, you can't get up and be like, oh, I'm sorry. It's 1215. We got to go to the buffet. My bad. No. This is somebody's soul. This is somebody's soul you're dealing with. This is somebody's life. This is probably their children and their children's children, their children's 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 children that you're dealing with. You've got generations in your hands in that moment. You can't be selfish. You can't be looking at your watch. You can't be worried about, oh, what does it look like? I'm down here on the ground and my jeans are getting wet and I got snot on me. Like, I went, we went to go eat at Waffle House afterwards tonight, and I went in the bath. I was like, I got to go wash my hands. I went in the bathroom, and they were out of soap. And I came out, and I was like, um, I'm sorry. I really need soap. Like, I want to be like, if y'all saw what my hands have been around <laughs> the last three hours, you would be giving me soap, too. I mean, you can't, you can't worry about that. You can't worry about dignity. All dignity goes out the window with deliverance. Yours and theirs. Dignity just goes, okay? Because you are in a battle. You are in a fight for that person. And it is the most beautiful fight that you will ever be in in your entire life. I'm telling you what. The glory of God, the power of God coming into a person... The, the power in the name of Jesus. If you ever doubt the power in the name of Jesus, you get into a deliverance ministry. Tonight, one of those demons, there was somebody there blowing a shofar. This boy, I don't know his name, but he's precious. And he blows a shofar every week. And he was blowing the shofar around the room. And every time he blow the horn, that demon would start twisting its neck. And, um, and the woman and the, the demon inside the woman kept saying, I hate that horn. I hate that horn. And so I said, do you? I said, you hate that horn? And I looked and I made eye contact with the guy. And I was like, blow it right here. Because I was like, that demon hates that horn. Oh, we're going to blow the horn tomorrow. Sorry. Not sorry. Because <laughs> the demons will tell on themselves, you know. And so I made him come behind her and blow that shofar, you know. I'm like, it is the most beautiful thing, though, because when you see the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. I was praying over one woman one night. And, um... And every time I started, it, this demon was being very uh, stubborn and he was not wanting to come out. And, um, and, and so I was like, in the name of Jesus, you know, name of Jesus Christ, you come out. In the name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus, you come out. Blood of Jesus, name of Jesus. I'm just sitting there. And every time I said Jesus, I noticed that thing would like twitch like the demon would. And so, so I just started going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because I was hitting a roadblock with this one. And I was like, Jesus, Jesus. And every time I did, it kept twitching and twitching. And finally, like that thing like screamed and came out. Because the name of Jesus, the name, there is no other name in heaven by which you are saved. There is no other blood by which you are saved. It is Jesus. It is the name, power, and authority of Jesus Christ. And he's giving you, sir, ma'am, power to wield that sword. There are people around you. There are people in your family. It may be you yourself. 
You need to go through some deliverance. Don't think I hadn't cast some stuff up out of me because I have. You, when you get a hold to this, let me tell you, when you get a hold to this and you begin to really, you stay in that secret place because you're like, God, if I don't stay in the secret place, if I'm not holding on to you, if I'm not 100% tied into you, I can't hear from you and these people may not get free tonight. I ain't having that weighing on my soul. I'm not having that on my hands. Fast and praying, it will drive you to it. It will drive you to that secret place because souls are at stake. Lives are at stake. Family generational lines are at stake if you're not doing your job as a Christian and being in the secret place and being 100% in tune with the Holy Ghost. You can't be playing around. You can't do deliverance ministry. Oh, that's so cute. Do deliverance ministry. And yeah, you know, the demons have to listen when I talk. Girl, you don't even know what you're talking about. You need deliverance yourself with that kind of attitude, that kind of militant attitude. You need deliverance yourself. If you're not coming at this ministry with love and, the, and humility and authority in Jesus Christ, you are in it for the wrong reason, let me tell you. And you will get your butt kicked. You are in it for the wrong reason. You need deliverance yourself. You cannot be having pride. You better be humble. You better be low. You better be in the secret place. You better be hiding the heart, the, the word in your heart. You better be walking in the anointing of Christ. Guys, this is the perfect ministry. That's why Jesus said for all of us to do it. What other ministry is there that keeps you humble, that keeps you relying upon Holy Spirit, and that makes you love people and people get set free? Can you name one? Because I sure can't. And I've been preaching the gospel for 17 years. I've been a saved, Holy Ghost-filled, Bible-believing Christian for 24 years, walking in the Word, a little bit longer than that. There's not another ministry. And that's why all of us are commanded to do this. Is this not amazing, guys? It's so beautiful. I'm just telling you, when I looked around the room tonight, we don't allow phones in there, or I would have taken a picture, even though we're not supposed to take a picture because we're not allowed phones. But if we could have taken a picture, if I was allowed to take a picture, I would have taken a picture. I would have taken a video tonight. I so wanted to capture it. And I just, you know, I looked around and just captured it in my mind. And then I just started praying and crying and worshiping Jesus. Because when you start to see God's people be set free, God's children set free, it's like, why would you ever want to do anything else? Why? Why would you ever want to do anything else? I'm telling you guys, this is the children's bread. This is the children's bread. People are being set free. There is fruit in this type of ministry. There is fruit in it. And if you are in it and you're not going to your neighbor or your coworker, your family, your family member, you know, ministering to them, helping them walk through deliverance, Oh, man, we're missing out, guys. We're missing out if you're not doing it 100%. So I'm going to get off here. It's 11 o'clock at night. But I just wanted to tell you guys what I saw tonight. We went to go eat afterwards at Waffle House. We talked about what happened. She literally said, my friend that went with me, she, literally, she said, I cannot quit smiling. She's like, my cheeks are hurting. I cannot quit smiling. Do you know how amazing it was to see her smiling? She had said she had had insomnia. She hadn't slept in so long especially coming off of drugs. She's like, I, I don't sleep since I quit doing drugs. She's like, it's so hard. And I said, girl, you're going to sleep tonight. She said, I am. By the time we, by the time we were almost to her house and again, it was another 30 minutes in the other direction. She said, she said, I, she said, I'm exhausted. She said, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep so good tonight. And she will, she'll sleep like a baby tonight. She will sleep like a baby tonight because she's free. Because she's free. So I just wanted to tell you guys, if you've not, considered it if you've not experienced it if you've been wondering what's latoya doing over there it's about to get a whole lot more fun over here in latoya's camp i can tell you it's about to get buck wild because <laughs> it's just i've come too far i've just come too far and seen too much i mean in the last when well, september october November. yeah in the last little three months I've easily done probably 40 hours or more of deliverance, and it has been so much fun. <laughs> like, 
it's the best thing in the world. And you don't know what you're doing. You literally don't know what you're doing. The, the second you think you figured it out and you know what you're doing, you don't. Like, you just never will. Like, if you think you know all that, all, all that there is to know about deliverance ministry, you don't know squat and you're prideful and you're probably militant and you just need deliverance. Um, because you just don't. You fully have to rely upon God. So, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I just wanted to share with y'all this story for tonight because I'm just... I'm flying. I'm so. I'm just soaring. I feel like I'm not even touching the ground. God is so good at what I saw happen tonight and the freedom that came to my friend and the freedom that came to some of the people that we were praying with tonight. It was just beautiful. So I love you guys and there is more coming. I am going to do more on deliverance teaching and, um, oh, I have my armor of God study. If y'all are not in there, get in there. Plug for my armor of God study. It's free. Um, we're doing four weeks. I did the first week last Tuesday night and we'll have the second session tonight or Tuesday night. Um, but there's a 45 page booklet you can download, go look, Go to LatoyaLackeyMinistries.com and register for that. It'll take you into the Facebook group. You can download the free PDF, catch up on last week's video, and be ready to join us Tuesday night. But we are going into the armor of God and talking about spiritual warfare and how to pray and talking about our armor. And last week, we talked about what the word wrestle means, the real definition of wrestle. When we wrestle not against flesh and blood, when Paul said that, guys, I'm just going to tell y'all real quick because it's so cool because I really want you to get this. He was telling us to put on our armor, all of that, you know, the scripture, the word wrestle. When he was describing that, some of the fighters of the day, um, there was three different types of fighters, okay? One was a boxer. The boxers were not what we picture today, okay? The only rule in boxing was um, you could not hold your opponent's fist, you could not hold his fist. They had to wear helmets. Their gloves had barbs of metal wire in them that actually cut through the, the metal, the leather. So when their punches landed, they were harder because they were weighed down with metal. They actually cut the skin like a hunting knife every single time they were hit. The only way to get out of the fight, there were no rounds, there was no time limit. There were no rules except for that holding of the hand. And um, the only way to get out of that fight was to surrender or to die was to surrender or die. They also had wrestlers back then. That was the boxers. They also had wrestlers back then. When we think of wrestlers, we think of like 17-year-olds and tights on a mat in high school. That's not what wrestling is. Back then, wrestling was very similar to boxing, but not as bloody because it didn't have the cutting. But there was no rules. There, were, You could bite, kick, punch, break bones, like break limbs. It was, it was very, very violent. Very violent uh, wrestling was. And... um and again, you had to surrender or die to get out of that. Um, but it was not as bloody as boxing. But then there was one that was even worse than the two of those together. And that was called Panctrician. And Panctrician was um, the... It was it was a deadly sport. Literally deadly sport. There were zero rules to Panctrician. Zero rules. And you did not... The rules were you either had to surrender or you died. But if you lost a match, you were dead. Like... The Pantrician fighters didn't even surrender. It was the most bloody that there was. They, the art of the day showed Pantrician fighters, their noses gone, disfigured off of the ears, gone, lips gone, um, high, high disfigurement from being in those types of fights. And there was a saying back then that if your son was a Pantrician fighter and you heard that he lost, you could be certain he was dead. That was the saying. If you heard they lost, you could be certain he was dead because they didn't surrender. And guys, when Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of wickedness in high places, when he said that we're in a wrestling match, don't think the high school kids with the tights on a mat. That's not what, that's not, eh, that's very docile. That's very calm. They were in a blood, hand-to-hand -hand combat bloody, broken bones, dueled to the death. You either surrendered or you died. They were in a fight, a war. It was bloody. It was violent. And that's what they did. And that's what Paul says that we are in. We are in a violent war. We are in a war to the death. We are in a fight to the death. Death or surrender, and I sure as heck ain't surrendering, and I'm not dying with these guys either, right? We are in a battle. So when you're in a battle in the spirit realm, you need to know what your weapons are. You need to know 
that you have power and authority over the enemy. You need to know who you are and whose you are and what God says. The power of his name, the power of the blood, power of praise, the power of worship, the power of prayer. You need to understand these things. You need to understand the armor of God. That's what we're talking about on Tuesday nights, guys. That just gives you a little taste of kind of what we went through last week. But go catch up. Go join that Bible study with us um, and come in and join up on Tuesday night with us. It's going to be off the hook. And um, anyway, I love you guys. I just want to share all this with you and I hope you have a good night.